راغبا في كل علم نافع ينمو العلم ويتقدم بتقنياته ومجالاته ومعه نطور ادواتنا في تقديم العلم الشرعي أكاديمية زاد زاد أكاديمية ينبوعها صاف صاف ليروي غلة الظمآن وتعلم الفقه الميسر عاملا بالشرع دون تعصب لفلان بشرى لنا زاد أكاديمية للعلم كالأزهار في البستان بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وآله وصحبه ومن اهتدى بهدى أما بعد There are certain actions that invalidate the prayer So if you learn them and master them You don't need to ask Sheikh, I did this, I did that Would that invalidate my prayer if you master these? Alhamdulillah So what are the things that invalidate my prayer? Number one, to break my wudu. Because one of the conditions of salat is to be in the state of purity. So if a person urinates, defecates, passes wind, etc., invalidates his wudu, <clears throat> then his prayer is invalid. Imagine someone in prostration and he takes a nap, he sleeps, wakes up after five, seven minutes and says, whoops, I took a nap. Yeah, your prayer is invalid, Akhi, because you broke your wudu. Number two, to be in touch with an impurity, an impure substance. So if it comes in contact with a worshiper and he's aware of it, this invalidates his prayer un less he removes it. So for example, while praying, I remember that I have a, an impurity on my head gear. So I immediately take it off and throw it away and continue to pray. Your prayer is valid. But if the, the impurity is in my underwear, I can't take those off while praying. So I have to break my prayer and move remove it and purify myself and go and establish a prayer once again. Number three, to expose or to uncover the aura deliberately. So a woman, while praying, takes off her scarf, fixes her hair, puts her scarf again, and continues to pray. No, you've exposed your aura deliberately. Someone taking off his uh, um, waist wrapper and his aura is exposed deliberately, your prayer is invalid. Number four, to give your back to the Qibla deliberately. And we, we spoke about movement and turning away from the Qibla. This breaks your prayer. Number five, to speak deliberately. So while in prayer, someone says to you, where did you put my wallet? And you said, it's on the table there. And you continue to pray. This breaks your prayer because Allah Azza wa Jal ordered us in the Quran by saying, and stand before Allah devoutly obedient. And this ayah was revealed at a time when the, the companions used to communicate during prayer. So while in, in prayer, they, one would ask the one next to him, so wh what happened yesterday? So you're coming to lunch today? That was normal. Until this ayah was revealed, the companions say, so we were ordered to uh, uh, be silent and not to speak while in prayer. Number six, to laugh out loudly. So if someone laughs out loudly during prayer, the consensus of scholars is that this invalidates his prayer. 
Number seven, among the things that invalidate a person's prayer, whether a man or a woman, is for a woman to pass in front of the worshiper or a dog or a black dog would, wa would walk between the prostration spot and the standing position of an, an individual. The Prophet said, salam, when one of you stands to pray, he will be screened if he has something in front of him that is like the back of a saddle. If he does not have something in front of him that is like the back of a saddle, <coughs> which means that is this height, then his prayer will be interrupted. If a donkey, a woman, or a black dog passes in front of him. And this hadith was narrated by Imam Muslim. Now, I know that many people would say, whoa, you're resembling women to dogs and, 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 and donkeys? I said, no, I'm not. This is the hadith of the Prophet And this is part of worshiping Allah without asking for justification or a legitimate reason. We comply without arguing. And this invalidates the prayer of a man praying or even a woman. So if a sister passes in front of her mom or her sister between her prostration position and standing position, this invalidates her prayer. Number eight, to abandon one of the pillars to omit an essential part or condition or obligatory part of the prayer deliberately without any excuse. And we spoke about this before when we talked about the pillars and the obligatory actions. Number nine, to eat or drink deliberately. Ibn al-Mundir reported the, cons the uh, consensus of scholars that whoever drinks or eats during his fard prayer deliberately and intentionally, that his prayer is invalid and he has to repeat that all over again. Number 10, deliberately adding a pillar or putting a pillar in the position of another pillar. So someone adding a fifth rak'ah in dhuhr deliberately or prostrating before doing rukur deliberately. This invalidates the prayer. Number 11, canceling the intention. And this has to have the firm intention to leave the prayer, not a, an intrusive thought that comes to your head while praying saying, oh, I think I'm going to leave prayer to do this and that. It's, it's an intrusive thought. No, we're talking about a sincere, firm intention to leave the prayer and to break it. This invalidates the prayer. Now, when we talked about laughing, that breaks a prayer, laughing as a scholars divided into categories or levels. <clears throat> one, <coughs> level one is just to smile. So someone is praying and then he does this. This does not invalidate his prayer. Laughing out loud this breaks the prayer without any doubt, especially that type of laughing where you have these loud voices because this shows that you're playing around with the Salat and this defies the purpose of Salat. So someone's ha 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 makes a sound. Number four, laughing that is in between. It's not audible and it's not smiling. The majority of scholars say that this invalidates the prayer if one or two letters have been uttered. So uh, these type of sounds would invalidate your prayer. Even if you don't make a sound, if you start shaking your shoulders, this invalidates your prayer and Allah Azza wa Jal knows best and with this, we conclude this semester of 
fiqh, I pray to Allah that we've benefited from it and that Allah Azza wa Jal increases, I pray to Allah that Allah increases our knowledge and makes us steadfast on Islam. Wallahu a'lam wa sallallahu wa sallam wa barak ala nabiyyina Muhammad. ينمو العلم ويتقدم بتقنياته ومجالاته ومعه نطور أدواتنا في تقديم العلم الشرعي أكاديمية زاد زاد أكاديمية ينبوعها صاف صاف ليروي غلة الظمآن وتعلم الفقه الميسر عاملا بالشرع دون تعصب لفلان بشرى لنا زاد أكاديمية للعلم كالأزهار في البستان